Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Well, hello everybody, I'm Hewell Hauser. Get ready for an adventure, an unusual adventure, an exciting adventure. We're spending the day in Monrovia, the all-American city of Monrovia. We're basically right now right off the 210 freeway on the corner of Myrtle and Evergreen, and we're starting off our adventure in this business. Now, this is one of the best-known businesses in Monrovia, maybe even in all of Southern California. It's been here since 1975. It's called the Wizard of Bras. Does that pique your interest? Okay, <laughs> we're inside the Wizard of Bras. There's a little bit of everything in here, not just bras, but we've been instructed to come to the back here and look at this beautiful big room and here she is. I have a feeling you are the wizard. I hope so. <laughs> Introduce yourself to everybody. Uh, my name is Bonnie Kaufman and I started this business in 1975 and we've been on this corner for 32 years. Bras. Now Bras. that's a very interesting subject and, yes. and I mean it really is, isn't yes. it? Yes, it is and it's important to women but it's also important to men. <laughs> and bras have been around for how long? Well, actually about 2,000 years. There are pictures, there's frescoes, uh, Roman and Greek times of women wearing various bands around their breasts if they were doing athletic things. And then somewhere about 500 years ago, we don't know who to blame, the Italians or the <laughs> Spanish, <laughs> but they created corsetry and what is called tight oh lacing. It's, it's equivalent to the Chinese women binding their feet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So bras have been around for thousands of years. Yes, they have. And you have thousands of bras here. Uh, look at this camera, just kind of <laughs> looking down here, this about, whole thing goes, how many uh, bras have you got in here? Uh, about 17,000. You're kidding. And every conceivable size from 28 to 58. And what do women do? They come in here and there are all kinds they, of special needs. Uh, exactly, we do medical and we do uh, maternity and we do weddings. Um, we do everything, anything that has to do with foundations. Yeah, okay. And so this, this is a 28-band box. Now, women don't come in here and pull these bars down by themselves. They come in and everyone signs in in the front and gets a fitter. There's a big staff here. Mm -hmm. And so everyone gets personal service. And this is 28. Well, that's a fancy bra. Oh, yes, they're beautiful things and plain things. And this isn't that big a cup. You can see how small around it is. This is a 28F. Mm -hmm. Now, 28F doesn't walk in here every day, but when she does, um, <laughs> she thinks this is a miracle. Yeah. Now, so really, you're you're providing a real service oh, think so. for a lot of women. Yes. Yes. We do ship all over the world. We do have a website, and uh, that we're we try to help women understand their sizing issues. This is a 28 double J, so you can see there's... there's a double J? Double J. Um, <laughs> Who started this sizing system? Well, actually, it didn't start until the 1930s. They, um, we were making bras in Europe and, and the U.S., um, but uh, cup sizing was unheard of. Mm -hmm. Adjustable straps were unheard of. That's a patented invention. And then for a while, wasn't it back in the 60s, bras were unheard of? <laughs> Well, to a small segment of the society, but they made the front pages of the newspapers. The bra that, burners. Uh, bra burners, yes. <laughs> and women who didn't wear bras. Now, are bras back now? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, it would be a rare, rare thing to find someone who does not wear a bra. Well, you really know I your hope history. So. I hope so. <laughs> we could do a whole program on bras. Absolutely. There's a lot of interest here, isn't women, there? Women, men and women need to understand because if it, the woman in your life is miserable all the time because her bra is killing her, uh, it affects the whole family. Yeah. Uh, bras are, they do impact posture, they can impact breast health. It's very interesting. It is, it is really 
a very complex subject. And a subject that a lot of people don't know a lot about. about I bet much. a lot of salespeople and a lot of department stores yeah. don't know yeah. that much well, about Again, Well, if you don't have the size range, what we offer is a complete size range. So you can only offer whatever sizes you carry. Uh, we are not limited with that. We also sew next door. Uh, so I have you can a, make a custom bra. Yeah, or we can retrofit anything to fit anybody. Wow, this is so interesting. We're going to come back oh, I would love and it. do Thank a you. whole bra show with you because <laughs> this it. is really fascinating well, stuff. Thank you. thank you. Nice to meet well, you. You know you. we're not here to spend the whole day with you. Y right, right. You we're here to spend the day with your daughter. That's right. Entrepreneurship generation after generation. <laughs> Absolutely, because if you think this lady has an interesting story <laughs> and has uh, interesting history and, and, and knows what she's talking about, just wait till you meet the daughter. There's a real, <laughs> there's a whole nother story there, right? That is right. World traveler, too. All right, with, here with we go. Hobby, yes. And she's just right down the road from you. Yes, she is. Monrovia seems to be a nice place for all of us. We're heading to stop number two, from mother to daughter. <laughs> okay, our Monrovia adventure continues. We have left the Wizard of Bras. We have now come less than a mile. We're in Old Town Monrovia, and we're going to spend the rest of the day with Bonnie's daughter who owns and operates Studio C Hair Artistry. And if you think her mother had a great story, wait till you hear the daughter's story. Okay, she's hard at work blow drying a customer. Good morning. Hi, Hi Hill. Good morning to you. Your name is? I am Carol Ann Kaufman. Boy, we just spent some time with your mom. What a live wire. Isn't she amazing? She just, she, you know, she's the world expert on bras, you know, anywhere that you'll just she find. She knows more than anybody probably in the world about bras. You know what? I think that assertion would be absolutely correct. I can't imagine. There's nothing more to know that she could know. And she is not a shrinking violet. Oh, are you kidding me? The woman gets younger every year. Now, does that rub off on you? What was it like growing up in this household? You know what? I feel very grateful for the parents that I had. My mother was an absolute role model of feminism and hard work. My dad was another unique character himself. He was a reflexologist and a spiritual healer. So to say that I did not have an average childhood would probably be accurate. Well, this is a beautiful little shop you've got here. Thank you very and much. And I know you're finishing up on a customer yeah. here. She's a pretty good. She's pretty good at what she does. Absolutely. She's very good at what she does. Look at all these trophies over here. The catch is, these trophies don't have anything to do with hairstyling, do they? No, they sure don't. You want to give everybody right now about a 30 second hint as to what you do? All right, this will be a hint. See if you can guess what I do. You get a lot of that, don't you? Yes, I do. That's one of the benefits of coming here to get your hair done. Absolutely. All right, she's finished you up, and we're going to get down to the serious business, you guessed it, of whistling, because that's what this lady does better than anybody in the whole world. Okay, now we're getting down to the serious whistling interview. I've been thinking of good whistling questions okay. to ask you. How did you start? whistling? Well, I came from very humble beginnings, Hill. I just started whistling in my dad's truck when I was five. You know, he whistled all the time, and I just thought it was the neatest so thing. So your dad was a whistler? Yeah, he was. And how did you discover that you were a whistler? Well, you don't really discover that you're a whistler. You just sort of whistle, and then you keep <laughs> whistling, and then eventually somebody says, wow, you're a really good whistler. Because not everybody can whistle, can they? Well, I don't know if everybody can whistle. Well, I mean, everybody can go. 
Most people can do that. Some people wish they could do that level of excellence. Really? Oh yeah, there's... So some people can't whistle at all. Exactly. Although I assume it's because they haven't been practicing. Mm -hmm. So it's all about practice. It is all about the practice. That's what I attribute my entire career to is 30 years of practice. Now are you a whistle out <whistles> or a whistle in? And see, I can't even whistle in. Well, maybe I, I can. <whistles> but not very well. Well, I'm gonna There's two types of whistling. Well, there's more than two types of whistling, but when it comes to what you're talking about, I'm an Audi, and then occasionally I'll rely on a little note to come in, but that is definitely not my- Was that an innie or an That Audi? was an innie, that was an innie, just like yours. Do another innie. That's a richer, uh, no it's not. Yeah, it's a more airy, it's not really a tune I can rely on. I haven't really practiced that for 30 years. I've been practicing the whistling Audi. out. Exactly. And what are other kinds besides innies and outies? Well, once I went to the International Whistling Convention, I found that there's a whole entire world of whistlers out there that I had no clue. So there are actually people, one of our past winners, here Chetru, he actually whistles out of his throat. He's a world champion. I have no idea how he what does do you mean it. Out of his throat, he's got to use his lips. He does use his lips to help to form the notes a little bit, but the actual notes come from his throat. Yes, there's also palatal whistling, which means you put your tongue to the roof of your mouth, and that you somehow get a tune out in that way. And I've thought of one. There's, and I can't do this either, where you put your fingers in and go. Mm -hmm. No, I can't do that you either. Can't do that at all. No, that's a whole different technique. That's still, you know, the philosophy is still air hitting surface, but it's a completely different approach. So I don't know how to do that. There's of course two fingers. There's the one finger. There's even hand whistling. Um, in Japan last year, when I went for the International Whistling Convention wow. in Japan, there was a hand whistler there that was one of the most incredible acts I've ever seen in my life. I mean, he did the most complex classical tune you can imagine out of his hands. A Japanese guy was incredible. That's a whole nother thing, it's though, because you're using form. your hands, yes. you're not using your mouth. Exactly. All right, I have, I have lots of good whistling questions right. for you. The most popular whistle, what do you think it is? I would probably have to say it's the old Andy Griffith. You think so? Yeah. But that's a specific song. Mm -hmm. What about? Okay, that actually is probably number one. And that's called? That's called the wolf whistle. The wolf whistle. Made popular by New York construction workers. You're kidding. Well, I'm kidding, but yeah, it's probably true. And it was mainly men whistling at women walking by. That's right. And Hence as... the name, the wolf whistle. Yeah, exactly. But now women are wolf whistling at men. Well, it's true. There's equality for all whistlers <laughs> everywhere. At least that is what I'm trying to create. Because mm -hmm. if you notice, if you look around at the International Whistling Convention or you look around at the average number of whistlers out there, you're going to find that there's more male whistlers than there are female Why whistlers. Why is that? I believe it's because there used to be a culture in this country and in other cultures that it wasn't ladylike or appropriate for women to whistle. And so over the years, I think people forgot why women won't, weren't supposed to whistle. It wasn't ladylike to whistle? It, you know, something happened after the 1800s because at that time there was whistling orchestras and other things that were involving women in whistling. And then, you know, you transition into, if you remember back to the 1940s, it kind of had transitioned into men whistling with the big band, but all of a sudden the women were nowhere to be found. And that culture has just continued. And so even at the whistling convention, you'll find that there's 10 women to 40 men. This is amazing history. Your mother with the bras yeah. and you with the whistling, it just goes to prove how fascinating almost any subject is if you really stop and study it and, and learn it. Oh, you know, the thing that I found most incredible was after I went to the first convention, my friend told me that there was an article in Reader's Digest, so I ran off to North Carolina to give it a try, and, and I, I won second place. I won first runner-up, I called it. In your and first contest. In my first try. And, uh, and it was absolutely exciting. And when I got back, I found something really interesting, is that suddenly I was an amazing whistler. Right? Because I had a trophy and because I had a, a medal, people looked at me different, people treated me different, and that was the beginning of what I would call my whistling career. Your empowerment. Yeah, and it really came from having some recognition from the outside, which totally surprised me.
There's a whole world of whistlers. There's a whole world. There's a whole culture. Uh, the whistling conventions takes place every year or every other year in North Carolina. I can only imagine what that sounds like. Oh, it's amazing. You have every every part of the spectrum that you can imagine from different types of whistling. The way that the competition actually works is that we start off with a preliminary round, and each person, if you're going for the grand championship, as I'm competing for you, compete in the popular category, and then again you compete in the classical category. Then there's a list of finalists, and then again you do a popular and then a classical You cover tune. the whole spectrum. You have to do absolutely everything. And you know, I was just thinking about this too. One of the great things about whistling is that it is irrespective of age or race or gender or any anything. Mm -hmm. Anybody, if they practice at it or use any time learning how to do it, anybody can whistle. Well, whistling is the world's most portable instrument unless you want to tap your fingers, which is not quite as melodic. So to me, that's, you know, I'm not a great disciplinarian. I don't have this real uh, strong, you know, let's practice every day thing. You don't play an instrument I, other than your lips. Exactly, because violin didn't work out because of the practice factor. But by the end of 30 years, I'd been practicing Whistling for 30 years, I didn't even realize There's it. There's a question. How much do you whistle, pra how much do you practice every day whistling? Well, it depends on what you consider practice. If I'm working on a gig or I'm working with, um, you know, an art group or a performance group. What do you mean a gig? Group, so people hire me for private parties. I have to a whistle scene. at private yes, parties. Yes, I whistle at private parties. I host karaoke. <laughs> I'm actually an ordained minister, so I even whistle at weddings. I've done the, you know, whistling down the aisle. You are your mother's daughter, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that is amazing. Thank you. Thank you. It's 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 become such an incredible part of my life. And after the first year, I actually got a call two months after the competition. A man named Mickey Finn called me up and said, hey, would you like to tour with us on Norwegian cruise lines for six weeks being a whistler in our band? Yeah, so I was this just has opened up a whole world. Oh, it's for just you. it's never ending. It is so exciting. And this is and it's become such a wonderful part of my life. It's something that was always there that I didn't even realize how much it meant to me until I started underscoring it and really participating with it. And now yeah. um, there was one particular week after, I don't know what happened, but I found that I couldn't whistle in the same way. This was about a couple months after my first convention, right? Uh -oh. Now that I'm really you focusing. You something had happened. Well, I just, it was something I ate or whatever it was, but you know, my instrument is a little temperamental. And so what happened was I had some gigs I had to do. My whistling wasn't at, par and that was when I really realized like this is a gift to me I don't mean a gift coming out it's a gift in my life I love the expression of whistling it's something you know when I'm at the supermarket I can blast out my whistle as much as I want I can't really do an aria I can't really sing to the music of the uh, radio at the market but I can whistle as much as I want and generally speaking an older man or woman will come up and pat me on the shoulder and just tell me how much they enjoy it well it's such a positive thing yeah to people... hear someone whistle yes so you can kind of are the Johnny Appleseed of whistling. I like that. Thank you. You whistle <laughs> up and down the street, yep. in the grocery store, in Everywhere. your car, when you're working on yep. your customers here yep. at the hair salon. I mm -hmm. mean, you, you're always whistling. I'm always whistling. Now, it's early. Yep. It's barely 10 o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning. Yes. Are your pipes, uh, does it take a while to get the whistling up to speed? Because we're going to ask you to do some serious whistling for us. It's sitting too early in the morning, is it? No, I'm always ready. <laughs> You're always ready. I'm always ready. ready to whistle.
I love it. You can't smile when you're whistling. That's the number yeah, one thing. I noticed that Impossible. standing here listening to you. Yes. You have such a beautiful smile. Thank you, you can't smile. It trips me up every time. That's the that's the, the biggest roadblock to whistling is you cannot smile and whistle unless you're a palatal whistle, right? If you and whistle. you do a whole choreography things <clears throat> with your hands. It, you you really get into this very seriously. Oh, it's it's such a wonderful musical expression to me. And you know the finger thing is sort of unconscious, but you know I have a mission that is to make whistling a part of artistry that it's all it already is, but people don't recognize it yet. And so that is really what I'm up to is that women can whistle, that people can whistle, and whistling is a beautiful musical art form that has just been underground for too long. What a wonderful day we have had here with you all. Thank oh, you cool. so much. Thank you so wow. much. Wow. It's been wonderful. I've learned so much about whistling. There's so much to know. And now, all out across Southern California, people can start whistling. If we listen, we can hear them whistling, some better than others right now. But it's something everybody can do. Yeah. It's here for all of us to enjoy. Isn't that wonderful? Can we end up with some kind of, uh, what else have you got that we can whistle to? Oh, yeah. Uh, that people at home can whistle to. Oh, well, gosh, you know, I think um, that Under the Boardwalk is That's probably a, good one. a classic. Let's do Under the Boardwalk. Well, hello, everybody. This is Whistling Huell, reminding you that if you'd like to go on this whistling adventure again or share it with your family and friends, it's available on DVD. All you have to do is call 1-800-266-5727, and we'll be glad to send it to you right away. Visiting with Huell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Huell Hauser. And for those of you who want to share our California adventures with family and friends who live out of state, 
Well, you can send them to our website at www.calgold.com where they'll find a link to iTunes and an ever-increasing number of episodes they can watch for free. We're taking California's gold worldwide on the web.